Hey guys, it's Landon Blake with RH, and I think this is it's going to be the last video, or maybe the second to last video in the set of videos that we've done on uh, creating a tie line drawing and a, and a boundary resolution. I'm sorry, a tie line drawing and a boundary anno drawing for this <clears throat> parcel that we surveyed here in Elk Grove. So in the last video, it was about 40 minutes, I went in and showed you how you communicate some of your boundary resolution with the references that you show on your distances, on your distance labels. And so uh, I, I think I finished that up. I think I have all the labels that I want now. So let me walk you through this. Um, so I added some labels here on this parcel map to the south. It's this map here from the 80s. Um, and I've added some labels on our two, two easterly adjoiners here. And remember, this is all lot five on that old sub map. So this this is kind of if you I'll try and remember to have Lori our marketing person link to the video in the description on YouTube, but this is this is our resolve boundary matrix. Um, so we'll try and link to the, to the video where I talk about that. But we're all all these are portions of this lot five on that old sub. All right, so uh, what I did here is I I went ahead and added an overall distance along uh, the south line of that parcel map. Uh, we have these two shorter distances here. Uh, which actually need a calc um, because I found a monument on the parcel parcel map to the south here, and so we're just showing our ties to that monument. Um, and it, it didn't fit super good. It it was within a, I think it was seven tenths, um, but you know I've been kicking I've been kicking around about a foot out here. Um, and I did find I found three or four monuments on this old parcel map, this 80 1980s era parcel map. And um, they all fit pretty good, um, but you know I'm am kicking around the foot. Um, this needs a calc too. <clears throat> okay, so I went ahead and added an overall here, um, so you can see uh, that per the parcel map, which is R4, it's 673.25 across the bottom, and I basically held the record right because I'm showing the same distance for my C. So um, I found a monument here, and I found this monument here, and then I found another monument over here. And uh, basically when I laid that all in, um, it, it, it fit really good. Uh, so it fit good with, you know, my monument that I found here on Bradshaw uh, fit good with this monument I found here. This is Sandoval, I think, or Sandet, Sandage, sorry, Sandage. I found a monument here. So those monuments fit, they fit really good. So on the bottom here, from here to here, this parcel map, um, I found uh, that the width matched, right? Uh, I'm sorry, this is the bottom. So uh, I found this monument, and I found a monument up here on Bradshaw, and that the, the distance fit, east-west distance fit. Um, and I believe it fit pretty good at the top. So if you come in and look at this, I added this overall. Okay, yeah, no, it didn't. So what happens is... Um, what happens is you as you move north, so I fit good on the bottom here, this east-west distance. Remember, my viewport's rotated 90. As I move north, um, this lot 5 gets wider based on my measurements. Okay, and you're going to see that again when we look at these two easterly adjoiners. Um, but I feel really good about this line of lot 5. So uh, I found a monument here on that line, and there's, some, uh, there's a, a really old occupation. There's some old fences uh, that run run right along here and uh, I think there just was some some differences in the measurements and so we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that again so I fit good on the bottom that's what this shows I fit good on the bottom of that map but at the top of the map I'm two I find it two feet wider across the top okay now um, I also added this distance here so from here down okay and you'll notice that I am uh, my calculated is 650.20, and the record for the map is 651.25. So that means I've got this map one foot shorter. I've got this this distance here one foot shorter than it shows on the map. So this map right here, so we're talking about the distance that goes from here to here. Okay, he shows 651.25. I show about 650, a little over 650. Now, why would I do that? Well, the reason why is I found a monument on this line. And I found a monument on this north line, and it was one foot south. And I know I've got a good position on it. I have a, I have a nice, tight, measured survey. Um, now, if I'd have found it within 
four hundredths, I would have I would have just held the record, but I didn't. I found it off a foot, and one foot's far enough. And remember, I told you I've, I'm I've got a, a you know one to three feet floating around in some of these old deeds, um, and I believe it. I believe it is. Uh, it's a good monument. Um, so I went ahead and held the monument, um, and I shortened this distance up uh, a one foot off the record. Now somebody might come in here and survey this and do it a little bit different. So what that means is this line right here could move one way or another one foot, right? So if you came in and held this mon and held this mon and ran the record distance, you'd shoot a foot past my mon uh, the monument I found and you'd be into this neighbor's property. Now, I'm not going to spend a bunch of time splitting hairs over that, even though it's in my resolved boundary matri matrix. That isn't going to make a huge difference on what I do here um, because uh, this south adjoiner uh, is written to fit my deeds to my, my deed to the north. Uh, but I'm just indicating to future surveyors there that I did find a, a one foot difference. So I found this this square here, I found per my survey to be about two or three feet wider across the top and one foot shorter north south. Can okay, you can see that same difference here, 650-41, 651-45. So I'm showing that same difference. So I'm communicating that to future surveyors with these two distances. This is what I calculated based on my survey. Okay, this is what um, I calculated, uh, or this is what the old map said. Now, you'll notice on this one, I say um, 651.25 R4, but on this one, I say 651.45 calculated record R4. Why did I do that? I did that because on the map itself, this distance is shown directly on the map, 651.25, but over here, he doesn't show this distance. You got to add the 30 feet and the 621.45. So I never call that a record. When I have to do math like that, addition or subtraction, I always call it a calculated record. So I calculated, I added those two numbers together to get 651.45, and so I just indicate with that with the CR. I don't know very many other surveyors that do that, but that's how I like to do it. Okay, so that gives you a rough idea how that square comes together based off uh, the map. So yeah, I found some differences out there, but you know, I've got some, I've got some monuments. Got a monument on this north line, and I got a monument on this. Uh, what is that? That would be the east line, and I found two or three different monuments on the center line of Sandage Avenue. So um, I feel good about my result, and there's one to one to two or three feet, depending on uh, how you decide to put stuff together here. All right. So then, uh, what I did after that was uh, I came up and I just added an overall uh, overall distance here with some level two crow's feet. Um, to show what what the difference is when you add up the distances on these three deeds. So distance one, distance two, distance three. When you add those up, what's how does that sum compare to the record distance for that same line in in the south adjoiner? So you can see that here. Okay, so uh, when I calculate that distance, it's five sixty three ninety seven. Okay, and uh, in the south adjoiner, this R six, it's five sixty one ninety nine. So there is a difference. There's about a two foot difference. And actually, uh, what would be a little bit better is if I just if I called that a calculated record and it said R1, R7, R9. So those are the three deeds I'm using to sum that distance. Okay, that's a little more explicit. So again, you got to remember as I'm as I'm moving to the top here, I'm seeing that this this is actually wider, uh, wider than it wider than it should be. All right, so. Uh, when I get in, uh, when I get in to uh, these east adjoiners here, let me show you what I did. So um, I went ahead and added an uh, uh, an overall distance across the top here. So this is the top of lot five on that old sub map, and you can see that um, the record I have six seventy three seventy three matches the parcel map R four. But when you add up the distances in the deed, we've got a three foot difference, right? So when I take this deed distance and this deed distance and the, deed, the distance in our deed, subject parcel deed, and I add those together, I get 670.87. But when I measure based on this parcel map I found and this section corner that I established here with some foul mons, I measure that, yeah, I get three more feet. So that's what we call uh, technically a gap, right? So there's three more feet from the center line of Bradshaw Road to the west line of Lot 5, I found three more feet than is in the record. Okay, And that doesn't surprise me. Why doesn't it surprise me? Well, let's come in and look at that map. 
oh, that's a pretty old map. Um, so I'm not surprised. And they're surveying a whole mile here. So I'm not surprised. Um, this might actually be two miles. I can't remember. Um, now it's a mile. So uh, I'm not surprised that I might have three feet here. Okay, so, so I show that difference here. In this overall label, I'm saying, hey, guys, I found across the top of life, lot five, I found three more feet than the record per the deeds. Okay. Now, where did I put that three feet? I did not give it to my client. Why didn't I give it to my client? Okay, I didn't give it to my client because my client's deed starts here and moves west, right? And there is a fence on this line right here. The, the fence was so close to online that I couldn't set the monuments online. I had to set witness corners. Okay, so there's a really old fence. It's been there for forever, long, long time. And it, it fits the deed. I like So I'm not going to push my property line three feet into the east adjoiner and take that gap from my client and, and, and call that fence three feet off. I don't think that's the right thing to do. So I held it. Okay, what that means is uh, that three feet's got to go somewhere between these two lots. Okay, now, I don't answer that question because I didn't survey these two lots. And I don't know who's going to get it. I'd have to go in and... Now, I pulled these deeds and looked at them carefully, but... You know, I didn't talk to these landowners and I didn't do a deep dive into the age of this fence and how it got built. Okay, so I just show here, per the deeds, the deeds are 300 feet. Okay, I actually got to fix that label. So the deeds here are 300 feet. Okay, but but um, my, my calculated distance is actually going to be longer and I should have added that. It should have been three feet longer. So it's 302.92. Okay, and let me tell you why this is important. So I apologize. We're going to add that. So 302.92 calculated. Okay, the reason that label is so important is what that does when you look at these two labels together. Okay, so I tell you I found the, the, the north line of lot 5 I found 3 feet long. When you look at this label, you can see where did I put the 3 feet? I put it on the top of these two lots. I didn't take it from my client. Right, so if you look at this, this inside label, oh, we're missing that label here. So we should add that. Let's add a label to make that even more clear. Okay, so I'm going to copy this. So let's check our deed real quick. Okay, so I should have 370.87 across the top. All right, so something's going on there. I'm grabbing something. Sometimes that's because you get a Z value on your line. Okay, so I'm, I'm within a, a two or three hundredths. Okay, so... We're going to just show that here. We're going to say, hey, calculated was 387. Ah, no, I can't remember what the number is. Three seventy eighty-seven. Sorry, guys. So that was my calculated, and I held it also for the record. Okay, so that's R1 because that's our vesting deed. Okay, so let me try and explain this because I know it gets a little bit confusing. Okay, so these three labels here, these three labels tell a story. So this first overall label tells you that I found three more feet in the top of lot five than was in the record. Okay, then when you look at this label, it tells you, hey, I held the record of my deed at 370.87. And when you read this label, you say, hey, I pushed the extra three feet into the top of these two lots for the reasons I already explained. So these three labels together tell that story. Now. I will also prepare a narrative that explains that in, in a narrative format. And I'll just say exactly what, you know, not exactly, but close. Hey, found three more feet on the north line of lot five than was in the record, right? Held the record on my deed, crossed the top, put the excess. Um, I uh, I'll put the excess somewhere in between uh, the two these two easterly adjoiners, right? So I'll, I'll wordsmith that a little bit, but that's what it'll basically say. Okay, so that... 
that's how these labels tell a story right now obviously be really helpful to have a narrative and and we'll prepare that and uh, i've got some more work to do so i need to put in some found mon symbols and i'm going to show some distances down here we we tied one two or three more monuments on the uh on the center line of sandage avenue down here that i need to add but um so there, there's a little bit of cleanup that'll uh, uh, you know just add those overall labels and kind of and and hopefully told a little more of the, of the story to the to the retracing land surveyor.